Hey everyone, today I'm gonna to do something that I normally like to do around this time of year, and that is to go through all of the seeds that I currently have that I'm planning to start in the spring, and then look to see if there are any varieties that I'm missing that I might want to order now so that I have them when I actually do start my seeds. So I usually do two rounds of seed starting, one in like early to mid-March, and then one in early April, just depending on if seeds need to be started anywhere from like four to eight weeks before our last frost date. I also do have some seeds I need to start in January, so I'll do that at some point. But today I'm gonna to go through all of them just in case you are also looking for some seeds that you wanna get. Most of these I think are ones I've grown before, so I can talk about my experience with them. And then I do have, I think, I know I have a few completely new to me plants, but I think most of what's new are other varieties or other colors of a variety that I've grown in the past. So let me go grab my toolbox, which is where I store my seeds. So this is a toolbox that I got at a thrift store right around the corner from us. And I, I think you know this, I really love finding old used items to either put plants in, so things that I can use as vases or pots, or find things that I can use to store items from my garden, which is what this toolbox was. So this one, if I open it up, now obviously I can fit most of the seeds I'm gonna start in here because my garden isn't very large. So I don't have like filing cabinets worth of seeds because I wouldn't have space for them all. I don't even really have space for everything that's in here. Um, but in the top, I just have, well, I have a random pack of seeds. I just have some like markers, plant labels, any small things that I want to store in there. And then in the toolbox itself, I feel like I started to get organized and then it kind of fell apart. But I have these photo holders, which I think a lot of people use for seed starting. I just saw people using them on Instagram. They are the perfect size. And then I added some labels on the front so that I know what types of seeds are in them. So I have enough Gomfrina varieties that I have them all in here. Um, I have enough zinnias that I have them all in here. And then some of my containers are mix and match. Um, so let's go ahead and we'll start with zinnias and gomfrina because those are definitely two of my favorite seeds to grow in my garden. Now, as I go through these, I will either put in images of how they looked in my garden from the last few years or images from the site so you can actually see what they look like. Although some of the seed packets do have pictures on the front. Um, let's go ahead and start with my zinnias. Let's see how many seed packets I have in here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Okay, that's way more than I need. Um, but here, I think I have the newest ones on the top, the new to me. So I love the Queenie Lime Zinnia series, which I think most people do. So new ones that I'm growing are the Queenie Lemon Peach and I think the Queenie Lime Orange is also new to me. Yeah, I think the Lemon Peach and the Lime Orange are the two new ones from the Queenie series. I'm very excited for them. I Was last year the first year I grew any from the Queenie Lime? I think it was. So I grew Queenie Red Lime, which I loved. I also did Queen Lime with Blush. And while both of them are really pretty, between the two, maybe Queen Line with Blush I loved a little bit more, but I love all of these. So these for me get to maybe like three feet tall-ish in my garden, depending on how much space I give them. So I would say they're in the shorter end of the varieties of zinnias that I grow. But zinnias are my number one flower for small gardens for cut flowers. So if you are looking for a flower that will be able to be harvested from throughout the season, the more flowers you harvest off of these plants, the more they'll produce. And they're typically for me, one of the first to bloom in my garden. I will start these with my April round of seeds and they're usually producing flowers by like mid to end of June. Usually I'd say mid June. So they're one of the first to flower from the ones that I start from seed and I can harvest off of them until either the cold weather kills them or powdery mildew kills them. And I'm gonna try to space mine apart a bit more this year so that the powdery mildew doesn't take over as badly as it did this year. In past years, I haven't had that much of an issue, had much more of an issue this year. So I do want to avoid that so these will last as long as possible. So those are the four from the Queen line that I'm growing. Now, what I do at this stage is I will go and look 
and see if I'm missing any colors that I might want. So these are all from Johnny Seed, but that doesn't mean that they're the only supplier of the Queenie Lime series. So I'm just gonna search for Queenie Lime, or let's just do Queenie Zinnias. So Queenie Lemon Peach, Blush, Red, Seed Mix, popping up onto the Johnny's C website now. I'm just seeing if I have all of them. So the only one I don't have is the Pure Orange, which to me, it doesn't look special enough to grow. Not that it's not special, but I have grown other orange zinnias that look very similar to this. So I don't think for me it's worth getting the Queenie Pure Orange, but I have all the other four varieties that they have listed on here. So I think I'm good on that. Next up, I have another one of my favorite varieties, which is the Zinderella Zinnias. So the ones I've grown in the past that I did just this last year in my center raised bed, I had the Zinderella Purple, and these are all from Park Seed. Zinderella Purple, Zinderella Red, did I do? No, Zinderella Orange is one of the new ones. Um, and Zinderella Peach. So I've already grown red, peach, and purple. For me, I like my brighter colors on the front deck more muted on the back. So I'm probably gonna do the purple and the red on the front, peach in the back this time. And then the two new ones that I have are Zinderella Orange, which again, it's an orange in you. So I don't think I need the pure orange of the Queenie series. So this one will probably go out front, the Zinderella Orange, and then I'm most excited for the Zinderella Lilac, which will probably be in the back deck because again, it's a more muted color. But that one looked really pretty. I love Lilac, Lavender flowers. So I'm excited to try out those. So I have five different varieties of those. Is it five? Four of the Queenie Lime series. And then I have two mixes. So I have from Johnny Seed, the Veneri's Giant Mix, which I've grown now since I think 2020 or 2021, I can't remember. And then I also have the Giant Dahlia Flowered Mix Zinnia. So Dahlia's in the name, but it is a Zinnia. I grew both of these last year and I can't tell a difference visually. So I don't think I necessarily need both of these. I got them though, just to see if there was a difference. And again, I'm sure there is to somebody that has a more skilled eye than I do. But these look the same to me. Now these are mixes, which means I have no idea what color I'm going to get when I grow them, which is perfect for when I first started out because I really didn't know. So from these, these will get to about five, five and a half feet tall, again, depending on how much space I give them. So if you want a taller zinnia variety, which can be great for creating like privacy screens, it's also great if you want to cut the flowers with longer stems, whereas the Zinderella is about the same size as the Queen Lime series. Those will have shorter stems when you harvest them. That You can't harvest them longer, but typically these are larger flowers, longer stems. So from these, I don't think I'm going to get any more giant dahlia seeds in the future. I'm going to still use up the ones that I have in here. But from growing the mixes, I then found two of the colors of the Benary's Giant Zinnias that I really loved. So last year, and I still have the seeds, I grew Benary's Giant Wine, this one right here. So I'm gonna grow more of those next year for sure. And then I also love the Benary's Giant Coral this year. So I bought seeds specifically for that one. I think the mixes, again, because there'll be a mixture of colors, will go up front. The wine and the coral colors kind of fit my color scheme in the back. So those are, all of the zinnias, and you know what, going through this, I think I'm good on zinnias. Let me actually just see if there are any other colors of the Zinderellas. So on the Park Seed website, I see purple, lilac, orange, peach, red. There is a Zinderella Zest zinnia, which is pretty. But I think, again, I already have, oh, I might actually like that better than the Zinderella orange. It is new, too. Ooh, I don't know if I need more orange. I'll add it to my cart, but I'm leaning towards probably not getting that one. Um, and then, yeah, there are some on here, like, mixes that are sold out. So that's another reason why I like to look now, because let's say I find one in the spring that I wish I had, but it's already sold out. I like to get my seeds for the following year, so, like, 2024 seeds. I like to have at least the ones I know I want to grow for sure all 
purchased in 2023. Okay, so in general, I think I'm good on zinnias. We'll set these over to the side. Next, we'll go through gonfrina, which it's hard to say which is my favorite flower. Gonfrina is definitely up there, but I find that I like zinnias a little bit more for my use just because they bloom earlier for me. These I usually start in my March set of seeds and they don't flower until sometime in like mid-July. And these also are a little bit smaller of a flower so they don't fill out a bouquet. So I can more easily make a sidewalk giveaway bouquet with a bunch of zinnias than I could with a bunch of gonfrina. But let's go ahead and see all of the types of gonfrina that I have. And I think some of these I have duplicates of, maybe. All right, let's go through what I've grown before. So I have all from Johnny Seed. I have QIS Orange, and I have two packs of those. I could probably give some of these away. I think I probably will do that. Um, I have QIS Carmine, two of those, which is probably my favorite of them. I just love the like bright hot fuchsia color. They were also the very first ones I grew. So I have that as kind of my memory of having a bed full of these. So I love Car Carmine. I don't know how many seeds I have left in here. I might give some of these away if I have too many. I have raspberry cream, which is a lighter pink. And then I have Audrey purple red, which I really love because I think I grew a purple one in the past, but it wasn't a bright purple like this. And I really wanted that bright purple color and the Audrey purple red was perfect. So those are the ones I've grown before. Oh, this one just popped up. Wait, I had two strawberry fields. Oh no, did I double order? I probably did double order because it looks like I got both of these. Unless, are you empty? No, there's seeds in there. Okay, double ordered strawberry fields. So I didn't grow strawberry fields in 2023. I did in 2022 and I missed having that red color in the garden. So again, we'll put the images up here, but that's what that one looks like. It's a bright red color, it's really pretty. And yeah, I just missed seeing it in the garden bed this year. So the two completely new ones are Gonfrina Snow White, which I, I like white flowers, but in my garden, I tend to go for so many bright colors all mixed together. And on my front, especially my front deck, white almost doesn't fit in almost because it is so brightly colored in there that white kind of looks weird. But my back deck is where these are gonna go. Same thing with the Lavender Lady. So I have more of the light purple flowers. So I have a new light purple Zinnia. I have a new light purple Gonfrina. Don't know if this one's new for this year. I think maybe it is. Um, these I both got on Baker Creek. So. Looks like I have extra of the strawberry fields, but I think I'm probably good on Gumfrina. Again, space-wise, I definitely am. Gumfrina is one where I will try to grow as many colors as possible, just to figure out which ones I like the best and which ones I'm gonna to continue to grow in my garden. So I think those are the only ones that have pretty little labels. The other ones, are kind of mix and match because I don't grow enough of them to have them in their own section. So let's go, well, we'll go here first because there are some more new ones that I'm excited about. Um, these are just, I think these are more, yeah, all of these are more annual flowers. So there's a section here of asters. I've grown asters in the past I think my first one was 2021, but I didn't give them enough space and it was a mix. So I wasn't choosing the varieties that I wanted. And because of that, I thought I didn't like asters. And then I grew specifically king size apricot this year. I grew lady coral lavender this year and I grew bonita shell pink this year and completely fell in love. Now these bloom, maybe started blooming in July, so not quite as early as zinnias, um, but again with these you can cut and they will come again. So I absolutely love these. I did have pest issues, was it scale? I think, and a bit of powdery mildew, but again that was, powdery mildew issue was mostly me shoving everything too close together. But I love these as cut flowers, also as dry flowers. They don't dry identical to how they look, whereas Gonfrina, it looks almost the same, but they took on a really cool shape and the colors changed a little bit. So I love all of these. These were all on my back deck. I have two new ones that I'm excited for. Um, the Tower Chamois Aster, which I've actually, 
forgot what color that was. Let me pull that up. Yes, this is a peach one. And this is 100% gonna go on my back deck. I think all of the asters are because they are more pastel, lighter tones. So very excited for this one. And then I have the Hazaster Hagen Light Blue, which was just a very pretty like, powdery blue kind of color that isn't something I normally have in the garden. So I'm excited for all of these asters, where they are going to fit, I have no idea, but I'm gonna grow them all and see how they do. I hope that I can narrow down my garden enough where I'm growing the flowers I know I love, but what always happens, I feel like in the spring, and I'm gonna try not to do is someone will offer you seeds, someone will offer you a plant, and what am I supposed to do, say no? can't say no, I'm gonna take it and put it somewhere, but I am gonna to try to not do that next year. We'll see how that goes. And then the other two that are in this pack are the status. I fell in love with status this year too. This one is a fantastic dried flower. Again, like Alfrino, looks almost the same as it does when it's growing in your garden. So I have two that I'm trying this year. I think last year I chose a mix, which again means that I don't know what colors I'm planting. So this time I got two specific colors that look really pretty. I got Seeker Pastel Blue Status. Again, I think I'm going towards that like dusty, lighter blue, light purple tones for the back deck. And then Seeker Rose Shades Status. Both of these are also from Johnny Seed. I need to give these more room. I did not give them enough room last year. I just kind of shoved them in a corner and they weren't able to do what I know they can do. So I might even put those in pots on their own this year and see how they do. That was everything in here, a bunch of asters and status. Then I have what I think is a very random bag of flowers. So let's see here. Now these two packets I got from Grow For Me 5B. They sent me some seeds of some beautiful flowers, specifically the Double Majorette Champagne Hollyhock. Seeing how beautiful it looked in their garden when they offered to send those out, I was like, yes, please, because that is a flower I know I will love. And then they also sent out, am I going to pronounce this correctly, Thalictrum? Lictrum? Black Stockings, which is another perennial. So again, I had to figure out the best place for it. These can handle partial sun. So I might do them in the parkway or on, mm, I don't know if that gets enough sun, but at least I can use these in an area that's not necessarily full sun. These get tall and they're really beautiful. So again, I want to find a place, oh, maybe along the wall where I had my shade border last year would be really pretty because again, perennials don't grow as fast as annuals, um, but eventually it would be peeking over the edge of the wall, which I think would be nice. Lots of fun ideas that I still need to figure out what I'm gonna do. Then I have some flowers that I've grown last year and love, so I'm definitely gonna do them again, and these are just leftover seeds. For me, a seed packet can last me three or four years because I'm not growing that many plants. So like this one has 50 seeds. If I'm only growing, I don't know, six, assuming that the germination rate stays good. These can last me for a while. So I have the Cupcakes Blush Cosmos, which I love the Cosmos. It kind of gave that like more of a free form to the garden um, compared to some of my plants that are a bit more rigid. Uh, however, I did have issues with not all of them, like one Cosmo plant stayed small and bloomed and then died. One kind of did what you would expect where it grew and bloomed. And then the third grew super tall and didn't bloom till like September. So I don't know if I trust them enough to grow a ton, but I am still gonna have a few in my garden and see how they do. And all of those three were in the same bed. So they were getting the same treatment. I have no idea what the issue was. Um, then I have from Johnny Seed, Sunrich Summer Provence uh, Single Stem Sunflowers. These are the only sunflowers that I grow in my garden now. Because for me, they don't bloom long enough for me to want to give them a ton of space in my garden. So these I plant, this will be my third year, I plant them in the shorter raised bed on my front deck. They grow, they bloom. Once they're done blooming, I cut off the main bloom. I tie the stakes together, or the stalks together, and use them for a trellis for other plants to grow up. So that's my plan with them. Those are the only sunflowers I grow now. Next up are my Morning Glory. This is the Heirloom Morning Glory mailbox mix. So there are blue and white flowers. I've only ever had the white flowers bloom from here. Um, so I don't know if I just haven't planted a blue seed, but white's been the only flower I've seen in the couple years that I have these. This is what I grow up my flower cart. It's very quick to vine and cover something. 
It is invasive though. If you grow it in your yard, it can kind of spread everywhere. So be careful with that. And then I also grew it up two trellises on the back. But if you want something that climbs and takes over quickly, the Morning Glory do that very well. I also have in here a Whirly Bird nasturtium mix. I did not grow nasturtiums in 2023 and I missed them. So I am gonna grow them next year. I love the taste of them and I also love the look of them. So I'm definitely gonna grow these maybe as like a border in one of my raised beds. I like to kind of tuck those in to other plantings. Next I have this Feverfew packet from Floret, but I don't have any seeds in there. Okay, it's empty, so that's another good reason to go through here. I did love my fee review, and I feel like I need to get more seeds. So I'm gonna leave this out as a reminder. And then I have two mixes that I think I'm probably, well, so this one here is the Eden, Eden Brothers Midwest Wildflower Seed Mix that I assumed because it said Midwest, it was natives. No, that's not what it meant. It was just wildflowers that can grow here. So that's what I originally put in the bed that I was trying to make a native bed. Uh, and it was beautiful. I loved how it looked, but it wasn't what I was going for. So I don't know what I'm gonna do with this one. And then I also have a flower mix fairy meadow. Let's see what I should do with this one. Maybe I'll just do a larger pot with it because I like what's in here. Um, it says, it has baby blue eyes, forget-me-nots, candy tuft, more poppies, bluebells, similar, I guess, to this. I don't know. I'm trying to figure out what I need to do with these. So let me know what you think. I'm pretty sure I just got this because the front was pretty, but I don't know if there's a good space in my garden for it. So that is everything that's in here as kind of my miscellaneous flowers. And then this is my last case. So I only have two, four, five, five? Yep, five of these photo cases of seeds. And there are more than enough for my garden. Um, these, I think, are all of my vegetables. So I have in here from Park Seed Pea Patio Pride. This is one that stays smaller, so it's good if you want a plant that isn't going to take up a lot of space. Now, with pea plants, you can trellis them, so you can keep them contained more vertically. But if you're looking for a more compact plant, this one's really great. And then I also have royal snap peas. These I liked because the pod was purple. These are green. I got these because they were pretty. Um, they don't taste any different to me, but I like them in my garden. This fall though was not a good year for peas. I have had great luck with peas the last three years before this. I don't know what it was. We did have an abnormally warm fall, so maybe that was part of it. Um, I also have in here a bunch of radishes. Uh, these are one of the first seeds that I like to start in the spring just because I get that itch to like grow something. So I will usually put these in the bed where my gomfrina eventually goes. But I have early scarlet globe radish that I don't know where I picked these up. It's Seed Savers Exchange, so I probably just got these like at a garden center. And then I have two from Park Seed, Radish uh, Parks Beauty Blend and then Radish Hybrid Starburst. And I guess I don't have that many vegetable seeds. I also have in here lettuce. It's just lettuce, musclin, chef's choice assorted species. I did these in one of the raised beds in the back last year. And was it this year or last year? It seemed like spring was very cold and long. So spring was too cold, fall was too warm, and my cool weather crops didn't do that great. We'll see how it goes this year. Now, the reason I don't have a ton more of vegetable seeds is that for me I'm usually only growing like one zucchini plant one cucumber plant maybe two tomato plants so it's worth it for me to buy the starts from a garden center that are already pretty far along I don't have to start them from seed keep them alive which is great uh, because I'm already starting a ton so for me I tend to find that I will start from seed plants that I either know I can't easily find in a garden center near me or plants where I'm really growing like four or more of them, which is what I do with most of the flowers. Whereas anything that's like three or less that I can easily find from a garden center, I'm not particularly tied to a specific variety of tomato or pepper. So for me, whatever is at the garden center usually works. And then I can just buy it when it's ready to go outside, plop it in there. So that's 
kind of how I split between what I start from seed versus what I get as a start from a garden center, but I think that's everything. Um, I already planted my native seeds outside, so those are already gone. I'll link that video down below so you can see what I planted there, but I think I'm at a good place. Like I don't have any huge holes that I feel like I'm missing. I do want to get more fever few, but I'm, I'm excited for this year's garden. I feel like, well, I'm excited every year, but I do find that every year I learn more and more about what I really love to grow. And when you have a limited space, it's really important because I have definitely felt multiple times when I'm looking at a plant in a pot that I don't love and I'm thinking I could have put something here, like I'm still trying to keep you alive in this container and I wish I would have planted something else there, but over time that has lessened for me because I think when you first start gardening, you kind of go crazy and want to try everything. But over time I find out what I really truly love and works best for my situation. So I think I'm going to be in a good place and I expect that to get like better and better with each garden season. I will list the flowers down below if you are looking for any of these particular varieties. I mostly buy from Johnny Seed and Park Seed just out of habit. That's where I kind of started. So I stick with it. Um, but there are obviously a ton of great seed websites. So yeah, I think that's going to be everything for this video. Going to get fewer few, maybe one other zinnia and I should be good until I inevitably accept free plants and seeds in the spring. So thank you so much for watching. Let me know some of the varieties that you're most excited to grow in 2024 and I will see you in the next video. Bye.